Hello, Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode 39. Wow, 39. That's the spirit. <laughs> That's the spirit. I love it. Hello, I'm joining the club of every time emphasize how many episodes we have been doing. Yes, I think it's awesome. Imagine when we do 100. Yeah, we're going to have some kind of blowout at 100. Mm -hmm. Actually, the way I roll, we'll probably have a big blowout at 50, which we're getting pretty close to, right? 40 is next time. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a mini blowout at 40 and that a mega blowout at spring? 50. Summer. That will be summertime. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Summer. <laughs> I just love the thought of summer. I see that it's raining in Toronto and Jubaijia, who's Same here in so lucky to be in Florida, if I remember correctly, mm. where spring has been there, I don't know, forever, I guess. We're just starting to feel real spring right hitting in the teens and getting lots of rain instead of snow so josh congratulations on your rain send it over here we need it for the garden jay uh -huh. skelly hello from connecticut i guess in the u.s CTS. and uh oh. ooh, dafo long jing looks like jubajia is finishing up some dafo wonder what's next for you um time signature holy time signature mma is here batman <laughs> holy oh holy aolo spag Heed the storm warning, for it is once again time to dispel the wind and drink green snail tea and expensive horse tea and listen to hair metal. Eat kale. <laughs> I think what he meant to say was eat kale. Right? <laughs> good the, one, good and one. And the hair metal spirit. So I tried to capture that, even though it was the naughty word kale. Definitely a four letter word in my book. All right, episode 39, Sunday Tea Book. Instagram, mm -hmm. welcome. Yossi Young, welcome on Instagram and everybody who is, I think I said hi. Oh, Bruna. I didn't say hi to Bruna. I just noticed her. Yeah. And I mean, extremely sunny where she is. Extremely oh. sunny in Brazil. Oh, Simmerjeet, hello. That. And Macmillan, hi how. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book, episode 39. What the heck are we doing here on a Sunday? Well, first, we're brewing tea and we hope you're brewing tea. So mm -hmm. let us know what you're brewing. Um, we're going to tell you what we're brewing, but first we're going to tell you what is Sunday Tea Book all about. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a, a book, article, or paper that is jam-packed with great information, um, but it's not easily accessible in mm. the West because either it's written only in Chinese or, it's, uh, or the translation is mediocre or it's just not very uh, well known, which is the example we're going to be talking about today. So that's what Sunday Tea Book is all about. Why do we... Um, why do we translate that online during a live session? Doesn't that sound so boring? Don't go away yet. I'm going to unboring it for you. The reason we do it live, and as many of you know who've been coming back week after week, here we are at episode 39, is as I've been learning about Chinese tea over the last, I think I checked a while ago, and it's, I have to say upgrade to six years. So as I've been learning over the last six years, and if you think that's a long time, I'm still a beginner. It's not a long time. I found that going, asking Jen questions and going deeper into the meaning of words and how, why words are used and what are the expressions come from and why the techniques are used and where those come from has been really helpful for me in advancing my knowledge and enjoyment of Chinese tea. So, so we do Sunday Tea Book to not just present you with a finished good translation of some solid information, which is available in the link down below on our website. You can, uh, you can go to the notes after the show. We're going to post them for this one. But if you go to the Sunday Tea Book link on our website, you will find out what's becoming, what is already a great resource. All of China Tea is there. So that's a fantastic book written by Jen's mom, Jen Li Wu. It is there as a resource for you. It's one of those ones that has that chunky translation. It's going to be hard to understand. You're going to miss stuff if you only have the hard copy text in front of you. But now with the, with the notes we've put on the website, it's, it's like a fantastic reference. So check that out. Um, basically, it's, it's the process of going through this though that gives us the skill. So I won't say much more about it. It's amazing. If you're on Instagram, jump over to YouTube because that's where the action happens. What's going on? I hear the kettle boiling. Huh? Kettle's boiling. What are we drinking? Oh, right. <laughs> we are having some Huang Da Cha today, some yellow Ooh. tea. Uh, I'm quite excited to have tea. I didn't have tea all morning. I'm dying like, of really... thirst. Yeah, same here. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna 
brew some tea. But before that, I just want to mention about、uh, what we. I don't think I've paid full attention to you. When I'm thirsty, I just、uh, space out.、Um, All I talk about was what is Sunday tea. Right. I, I didn't just, get into today's document. Okay.、Whatsoever. I just want to、uh, give you another introduction of、uh, today's tea, more specific today's tea. I mean, today the articles we're reading these weeks、mm. is about、uh, tea types and tea categories、mm. or tea classifications, however you want to. Uh, say it. Yes. And it's uh, from um, Professor Chen Chuan who、uh, put forth this concept of a six T category. We're very familiar with this、right. concept now,、uh, but back at his time, this paper was published in the seventies, and the translation came out in early eighties. So back in that time, it wasn't very clear. So he laid the. I just want to slow you、right. down a bit because that's a lot to absorb, especially、mm. if you're new. Is that. As late as the '70s, I don't know about you guys, but I thought the six T categories were pretty old. You know, at least a hundred years, kind of.、Mm. So, just to make sure you caught what she said, because it's so important, I think, to understand that when he published the paper, the six T categories weren't sort of right now. It's a foregone conclusion. Oh, of course, if you're a T person, you know the six T categories.、Right. '70s, it wasn't a thing. It was a proposition. Uh, theory.、Mm. So anyway, go on. I just wanted to make sure that that because it you it goes by quick and people might miss it. To me, that's amazing. Right, right. And、uh, the interesting thing about this is the translation is so good, is so professional.、Mm. Uh, there's no English issues. You read it, you're like that. Today、amazing. we're going to see our first English issue, so don't go away. Yes, that, my... but that's exactly the interesting thing、mm. is when it's perfect. Like、uh, we mentioned, China Tea Book, the translation was done so,、uh, you know, like this. It's like instructions. A, you know, you read the instructions the from something instructions and you have、like、a good、that. giggle. It's like that. Yes, and、uh, in the, which case you will be watching out for those. Oh, maybe、right. the translation wasn't good, or maybe I'm not getting that right. But when the English was perfect,、uh, you probably would think, okay, this is what I'm learning, and these are all good and right information. But that's not the case. In today's、uh, mm. session, we will point out some wrong、really、good stuff. translation,、mm. the opposite meaning. Yes, so, even opposite. Yes, very interesting stuff. Yeah, so、Sorry. that's very fun. No, 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 I love that. I love、right. that. I just want to get to the tea part. <laughs> yes. So,、um, oh, did you? Oh, want- share with us what you guys are、uh, drinking. I know Zhuba Jie is having some Da Fu Lun Jing, and finishing up. And、uh, Time Signature is not having any tea right now. Again? I think so. I think it's the evening. He doesn't drink much tea. That's my guess. Not brewing tea, but I finished the last of my Bai Mu Dan earlier today. Okay, so he was having Bai Mu Dan earlier, and it looks like Macmillan is caught is、uh, is watching from Oklahoma. Married though in Chongqing,、Ooh. Chongqing, which is really close, I believe,、Chongqing. to where. Oh, I don't want to say too much. There's some tea trivia coming up later, and this will be part of it. So we'll come back to、uh, Chongqing. Uh, no,、oh, I got nice, mixed up.、Nice. Chongqing is our、uh, dark tea was from there. I got mixed up with、uh, Chongqing. Uh, Chongqing is in.、Uh, mm. We cannot say that in Sichuan. It gets in trouble because they are now they are like an independent city, kind、Ooh. of like Beijing and Shanghai. They're But, enveloped in by、zone. Sichuan province. How about that? They're <laughs> the enveloped. The Sichuan region, it, right? Yeah. Cool. Jade、uh, Skelly's、yeah. got a roasted oolong、uh, brewing up.、Uh, Clifford Little following along with、uh, Jian Li with some Angie, Angie Bai Cha. Nice she was、one. recently having that when she was in Angie recently. All right, so. Where to go from here? Let's talk about the tea a little bit while you brew it, and you guys can keep letting us know about your tea. I want to talk about the garden a little bit. I see that Jubai Jia said same as in Florida. I'm not sure. Oh, very rainy in Denmark.、Uh, ah. Yes, it's so awesome to.、Uh, I'm glad you guys are、uh, comfortable and willing to share where you're calling in from or watching from. It's really fun to see such a diverse crowd. Hey SK Zam on Instagram, welcome to the live session.、Mm. So let us know what you're brewing on Instagram as well, and if you want to stay tuned for the whole、uh, show, don't forget to jump over to YouTube. So let me explain how we do Sunday Tea Book with this new edition. As Jen mentioned, we're going through Chen Chuan's tea classification in theory and practice.、Um, 
It's not, uh, in the previous one, I was reading section by section. This time I'll just be pulling up key sections and we'll be highlighting these zones like we, like we kind of foreshadowed. We've got some mm. interesting missteps, I want to say. The English is still fantastic, but there's some interesting missteps and we'll get right mm. into those. So that's how it's going to roll. So if you're on Instagram, we're going to actually say bye-bye. Jump over to YouTube, let us know what you're brewing and tune, tune in for the rest of the show. But until next time, bye my Instagram. <laughs> End video. And on the YouTube side, let me know if you liked my rendition of uh, Eat Kale in, with my hair metal falsetto just a moment <laughs> ago. If you enjoyed that, I will try to incorporate more hair metal falsetto into the show. <laughs> and a gold screen. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Oh, my pre done of the title kept on Instagram. I always complain about yeah, that. No, no, so, no, that's uh, pretty good. Yay. It's, you have to do that like one second before. Oh, I did that a long time before. Oh, really? like, I don't know. oh, I don't know how to say Kiel. Kiel Kiel one five nine is from Belgium. That's awesome. So we've got Europe, North Europe. I think I can say well represented, right? Denmark, Belgium. Hope my geography is not too bad. I was gonna ask. Uh, what's the South French? Jubaijia Chongqing is next to Sichuan. They are the king of hot pot. Yes. Oh, whoa! Yes. We love that. King of Hot Pot and one of the four furnaces and not because of the food. You told me about those. Those are yes. four places in China Super that are hot. uncomfortably hot Mostly and because it's a human. Make that hot. Ugh. Mm. Yes, it certainly does. Yeah, yeah. All right. Autumn for Fernanda. Rainy and gray. Waiting for the cold next week. Ooh, that's right. We're, we're the opposite. We're I want the... to stand some cold down. No, like no, that. No, no. Don't send it. Poor Fernanda. She's in that end of summer coming into autumn. <laughs> Uh, I feel for we you. We finally go above zero, and uh, but soon we're gonna be flipping negative again mm. for a couple of days. I hope that's the end of it, as I'm really looking forward to get my garden stuff out. Oh boy! So a little bit about the tea. Okay, we're drinking uh, Hongda Cha, as Jen mm. mentioned, and I gotta point out the uh, the roasty, chocolatey sort of almost. Mocha. I wouldn't say coffee, but mocha-like, like chocolatey coffee-esque notes in this tea make it really fun, accessible. Um, Anhui Province tea, right? This is mm. a traditional Anhui Province roast that finishes off a really yes. nice yellow it's tea. It's very different than a lot of yellow teas you would encounter mm. because of this uh, last uh, step Definitely. of roasting. Mm. Yeah, and I think uh, Cindy is having some uh, Huang Da Cha with us too, so be sure to share your tasting notes. It's always very uh, fun to see how people describe the tea. I have to say, I have to call out Cindy personally and just say I am so impressed. The only time she was out of step with our precise tea that we're drinking was when we didn't publish it. There is no mm. way she had to have ESP. And, and she did pretty great. <laughs> she did pretty great with the ESP kind of being in line with what we were drinking. Really mm. fun that you're following along, Cindy. Of course, not a requirement for those of you who are just having whatever you want. That's yeah. what it's all about. Drink what you like. Speaking of But you do have to let us know what you're drinking <laughs> and how it is. Yes, just want to, uh, forgot to mention that uh, uh, in Instagram. Uh, so we're doing this reading. This paper is slightly more academic, mm. a little bit nerdier. Slightly. A lot. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to, you don't have to know anything to enjoy tea. This is not like. Uh, Good point. I don't want to make Good that point. sound really snobby. Like, oh, you don't know six tea type or stuff. Exactly. Like uh, you really don't need this. This is just for Interest. you know like us who are interested in learning a little bit more a, a little you know uh, a little research a little um satisfying our nerdy side a kind of a fun experience mm. for us uh so don't feel bad that you're not interested in this at all it's totally fine drinking yes. tea is drinking tea i know zero about rice except how to eat it and cook it that's right. fine but i eat it all my life right? so that's so that said if you're here just for the tea drinking and the hair metal falsetto that comes from time to time that's perfectly fine <laughs> we're super glad you're here and I really, I'm really glad you mentioned that. I yeah. always forget to say that. I always think. I think it's important. People feel like they have to know yeah. things when they're enjoying things, but that's not. Yes. Yeah. At least I don't think that way. No, I agree with you. And, and there's a quick and dirty uh, videos on what are six T categories. Uh, what's the major like uh, fundamental difference between them? Those are quick answers. So these ones we will dive into yeah. more details for those. 
uh, of you who are curious about details this and kind of the origin of this concept, which I find really fascinating, and mm. I think many of you do too. Um, so Fernanda says, "Nice tea, Jen," which I think refers to your T-shirt and not not your tea, but could refer to both, or could just refer to the liquor. I don't know. Um, I thought I brewed it's my conduct chart exactly when you brewed yours, but mine looks darker. Oh, mm. she! And you even time it. That is so awesome. Mm. Um, it could be a number of things. Could, could be, be the uh, amount of leaf, leaf amount. size of the gaiwan. Lots yeah. of things could be playing in there. Yeah, and also, uh, also this little brewing can is slightly cooler tone. Mm, so true, it could affect true. that too. Yes. Mm. Not to worry. You dial that into your liking based on the taste and then just adjust as you go. Mm. And Josh says, okay, I've been convinced to wake up from sleepiness and brew some real tea. Nice. Good job, Josh. Uh -huh. So what should I make? So Josh loves it when I'm going to let the audience kind of guide Josh today. I'm going to uh -huh. stay out of it. But I love how Josh always asks everybody to pick the tea for him. So everybody uh -huh. decide what Josh will drink uh -huh. and we'll see what he's going to drink and if he follows your request. Fernanda, ooh, yummy, aged by would be my choice. Okay, there's the suggestions are oh, rolling nice, in already. Nice. I'm leaning and towards by Mudan. Mm, there we go. Mm. Um, Jade says mine too, but I missed the context. And maybe a little darker. Oh, the t-shirt, yes. Jen's t-shirt is even kind of metal. Yeah, yeah, a little Andy Warhol metal. She actually, that's how I kind of got reintroduced to hair metal is she was, <laughs> we were just listening to some music and some came on. And she's like, I absolutely love this, that melodic rolling guitar. All right, back to the tea. I think, guys, it's getting close to time. I think I've made you wait long enough. For those of you that are new, we do something that's super fun here. So I hope you guys, if you're new, I hope you'll enjoy it. And uh, you will. I'm, I know you will. So here we go. <laughs> Without further delay, we're going to get into it. I might have to press the button, though, because I think I forgot to turn this on. Uh, here we go in 20 seconds, but I got to do the title screen. It's tea trivia yeah. time. time. Woo. Yes. Yay. So only about 10 seconds to go. I'll give this a little rotation and guys, here we go. Okay. What is tea trivia time? Tea trivia time is fun. It's just goofing around. We're not going to, we do some, the computer does some scoring, but nobody cares if you win or lose. The important thing is that you play and have fun and hopefully learn a little bit, but sometimes the questions are goofy. Let's get started. What is the purpose of Kilgreen? Is it one, to promote oxidation? Is it two, to ensure the tea is bright green? Is it three, to ensure the tea is properly dried? Or is it four, to eliminate the rank vegetative smell? Okay, guys, you just enter the number and hit enter. Try not to enter any other numbers once you've answered. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the magic computer works, so try to just enter the number and press enter. You can put enter and type a little bit, but I'm not sure how it will work. We've seen some weirdness from the machine. So when the timer runs out, as it counts down, uh, you're not fully out of time at that point. You can still take a guess. You've got a little bit of extra time, but you are running out at this point now. You can still answer. Josh coming in with four. Josh coming in with four. We've got plenty of folks coming in with four. I thought it was none of the above. Ooh, Jubaijia coming out with a three. Um, and Clifford four, Jade four, everybody's guessing four. Fernanda says, let's have fun. I agree. All right, guys, times are running out. Bruna comes in with a four and the right answer is four. We'll see why in a little while. Um, I can't say that three is fully wrong to ensure the tea is properly dried. It is one reason, but the primary reason is to eliminate that rank green smell. Great guesses, everyone. Good job. Though I mean, Josh says, though I mean kind of between three and four. Right, 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 right. We'll talk about it a little bit more a little bit later. Let's keep rolling with tea trivia time. Jen's exciting new <laughs> tea snack is one, Yasha Siang peanuts. Two, Japanese cheesecake made by yours truly. Is it three, sunflower mm -hmm. seeds? Or four, hickory smoked mountain walnuts? What is Jen's Favorite, exciting, new tea snack. Not favorite, exciting, new. Okay, keywords here. <laughs> Time signature says yes. Or possibly fun. What the? I'm only here to win. Haha. -ha. Nice one, Josh. Nice one. We know. I love his angry uh, Sichuan mask face. I don't know why. Sichuan I, mask I feel face. like it's a little bit like a Sichuan mask. All, All right, right, guys. Time is running out for this answer. 
I'll give you a hint. If you're, uh, if you follow us on Instagram, you might have a good chance of getting this. Answers rolling in. Fernanda guessing Discord. one. Discord. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's why I put it here. This is so I can promote our Discord channel. Links down below. If you're part of our Discord, you will know the answer to this. Of course, depending on how, uh, how closely you follow it. Lots of variable guesses coming in. It seems like I got a. Uh, Phil doesn't seem like a baker. Well, I am a baker, and the correct answer is. Let me turn off the clock. <laughs> Yasha Siang peanuts. That's right. We have them. I haven't tried them yet. I have to say, I'm pessimistic. I don't think the tea aroma is going to stand up to the peanuts. So we'll see how that rolls. All of those I love. Okay. She does love all of those. Every one of them. But the new one is the peanuts. All right, guys. Next question. That two teas are closely alike in character indicates that one, they come from the same tea garden. Two, they were processed with similar methods. Three, they were made by the same producer. Or four, all of the above. Ooh, this one's. Oh, this is a tricky one. This is mini evil, guys. So I apologize in advance, but I'm just having fun. You never know. They're really good. Sometimes they get that. They are really good. They are really、oh, good.、Right. Sunflower seeds are too OG. I don't know what OG means. Too. Holy Grail. Oh no, that's a.、Uh? That's、oh, HG. That's HG. <laughs> Sorry. Time signature comes out with a four. He goes with all of the above. First answer out. Oh, a lot of people following with four. Oh boy. Oh boy, I'm gonna have some splaining to do. I think Cindy comes out、mm-hmm. with two. Interesting. Josh says, "LOL." I thought Yasha Chung peanuts were a joke. If anyone didn't know the translation, interesting one. Yes, duck shit peanuts. <laughs> interesting. That's right. So. Clifford also comes out with two. Simmerji two. Bruna four. Many guesses for four, and a few guesses for two. Betty, welcome to the stream. Good job, those、Whoa. of you who guessed two. Four was purposely to trick people, but that two teas are closely alike does indeed indicate that they were processed with similar methods. The other two are possible, but it doesn't indicate that. Okay, good one. I wonder if they read ahead or if they're just so on the ball. Great work, guys. Super good. Awesome. Okay. Next question: The changes that take place during tea processing are primarily brought brought about by one oxidation, two heating, three kinetic manipulation of the leaf, or four resting in between processing steps. KL one five nine was away from the keyboard for a few minutes, and all of a sudden there's a quiz. <laughs> he, made, he made that. That uh, smiling, uh, wincing face. I didn't see indicates and thought it was could be. Ah, gotta read the question. I even read it out aloud. Jubai Jia says, "I think I will tie for last place." <laughs> Don't worry, right? We're here to have fun. Except Josh, he's here to win. <laughs> All right, guys, time is running out. Time is running out. The changes that take place during tea processing are primarily brought about by is it oxidation, heating, kinetic manipulation of the leaf? I see answers coming in. Some for oxidation, some for heating. Lots of an- lots of guesses at oxidation. Good job, everybody. And there we go. A couple of you got it. The primary the changes take place primarily、uh, are primarily brought about by heating. I got a couple of answers that are related to today's reading, and some that even reach into the future. But great guesses, everybody.、Um, I did make that a little bit tricky, so I get it. But、uh, anyway, I'll say something later. There's. <laughs> I was just going to say that if you think about the Kilgreen process, which uses heat, it doesn't promote oxidation. So that was kind of a tip that it couldn't have been oxidation. Anyhow, here we go. We're almost done with tea trivia time. You guys are rocking it. Right now, this very second, Jianli Wu is one in Anji, two in Sihu, three asleep, or four plucking tea. <laughs> this one's less knowledge base and more of a, well, a little bit guess, but、uh, I'll give you all a hint. It's pure guess. Good luck. <laughs> well, asleep is for sure, right? No, I don't think it is. No. No, I don't think she's 1:30. asleep. One thirty. It's、yeah. only one thirty a.m. and she's in the field. We're rarely asleep by one thirty when we're in the field. Just saying. All right, <laughs> answers are rolling in.、Um, I think primarily is too subjective. Ha ha! It's a trick. 
Yeah, it's a trick. I'm all about tricks. Okay, everyone's guessing Angie, and we have a guess for asleep, which is not a bad one, but I really don't think so. Four plucking tea, great guess. Uh, lots of you seem to follow us on social media, so you're right, everybody who guessed Angie, unfortunately. <laughs> She has moved on. She is in Sihu, so stay tuned for some reports from the field from Jian Li, who is now in Sihu. I think we can guess what tea we might be seeing, but you never know with her. She sometimes has tricks up her sleeve. <laughs> Guys, here's the leaderboard. Fernanda, congratulations with three Ooh. correct answers. Clifford, also, congratulations. Awesome. Tied for first. Uh, Jade, awesome. Uh, two correct answers. And everybody else, you're all winners in my book. Tea trivia is just about having fun. As you can see, some of the questions are serious. A lot of them are goofy and fun. That is the whole point of tea trivia is to have fun. So thank you guys for playing. Now it's time to dive into our core content, our real you deal. You evil Phil. <laughs> you evil Phil, yes. So evil. Right. <sighs> Great work, guys. That was super fun. Hey, Igor, welcome. Oh, YouTube did not notify me and I lost the trivia. I think you had a chance at first place too, Igor. Maybe next time. And Fernanda got it by pure luck. She took a guess. Great work. Great you can't get it right if you don't guess. All right. Well done, Fernanda and Clifford. Everybody, well done. You all did great. All right. Oh, that wasn't fun. Oh, I have to say I'm exhausted now. <clears throat> But that was really fun. You know, you ever notice that when you're having a great time, it's always somewhat tiring to have a great time. Anyway, that was such a great time. You don't time. notice till it's ended. Until it's over. <sighs> That's a lot of talking. A lot of talking, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of fun with you guys. Thank you guys for playing. That really makes that super fun. I'm not kidding about that. All right, so where shall we head from here? Shall we dive in? Shall we talk? Hmm, I'm on a, I do want to talk about this tea a little bit more. I have to say, this is one of my, it's becoming one of my favorite uh, morning tea. This is a really nice, and then what happened with this tea is I used to recommend this at festivals for people who were, uh, it, surprisingly, as a yellow tea, you'd think as a, somebody's new to tea. So people come up to say, hey, I'm pretty new to tea and I'm wondering uh, where I should start. Mm. And I ask them, hey, are you a coffee drinker? And oh yeah, I love really good coffee. I'm a coffee drinker. I'm a kind of like, maybe not a connoisseur, but they like, you know, they're not, maybe not necessarily Tim Hortons great coffee lovers. You know what I mean? Like they like good coffee. And I kind of recommend this tea because of that mocha note that Cindy, uh, Cindy and we Cindy said she felt that mocha note too, but she couldn't place it mm. until we said it, which is why we shared notes, right? That happened to me right? a lot. Right. So that's why I love to. So this is a, I, I, I tell people this is a great one if you're coming from that place and probably a great morning tea. But actually, I never took that advice myself and use that as a morning tea very often. For whatever reason, I was looking for a tea the other morning and I start to get into Huang Da Cha as a wake-up tea and I really love it. The, uh, the bold aroma, the bold flavor really works on me. Not only that, it's yellow tea, so it's got a pretty nice little uh, mm -hmm. little pizzazz, so really great for that. Those, and the leaf. A lot of people, when they smell the leaf uh, in person, they're really blown away. It does have a really nice dry leaf aroma. It's not one of those ones that's hard to detect. It's jumping out and making you want to brew it That's and taste what I it. love uh, for, mm. for morning, morning right? tea. Like yes. I'm those uh, super slow wake up people. I need hours to fully like awake. So my taste buds are not sensitive morning. Mm. I don't want something too dedicated that I need to work. Concentrate, right? Yeah. And as soon as you pull the lid off the container, you're going to get that. You're going to get that aroma is going to open your eyes a little bit already, which is really helpful for you too. Mm. She's right. It's an effortless morning tea. I love that. And of course, it doesn't have to be a morning tea. Mm. Whoa. What? Whoa, something in the comments that's quite shocking. Macmillan hasn't seen his wife since 2019 because of COVID. What? That's brutal. Goodness me. All right. And who is... Uh, there's a question about what is called dark tea, but I don't know what it is. Josh says, funny story. I've actually been aging this personally blended batch of Bai Mudan so long I actually forgot I had it. Excited to see how it's going. Ooh, you gotta let us know how long it's been aging too, since it's been forgotten under a cupboard for so long. 
Mm. Just brewed up some Thyme Signature Chill Herbal Tea. Nice. Wow, that's, I hope you get to see her soon, seriously. Right. I have hopes for a vaccine when the world can be back at normal without mm. quarantine and all that. Anyway, I'm going to answer Macmillan because we're going to talk about dark tea a little bit later. I'm mm. not sure who he's asking uh, what is called dark tea, but if you're, if you're asking us, I'm going to answer it. And if you're not, I'm going to answer it anyway. Um, dark tea is post-fermented tea in our estimation. So that includes uh, Puar, uh, Qianliang Cha, uh, Liu Bao Cha, those kind of teas. There you go. Mm. Um, it's a little different. I see somebody, Jero, Jero Nair says, aged tea. I don't know if that was an answer, but it's a little different than aged tea. We can have aged Taiwanian, we could have aged white tea, such as Josh is digging up right at this moment. Mm -hmm. But maybe that was all out of context, so I'm just kind of catching up and getting ready to jump in to today's. Today's is going to be so exciting. I'm really excited about this stuff today because we got some... I don't know why am I excited that we have some corrections. We got some good corrections, okay? I guess it's because it's the whole point of this, right? Mm. We want to add some clarity to things that would otherwise right. be confusing, and we get a chance to do that today. So I guess without any more delay. Another disclaimer. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I'm so afraid to get in trouble, and people feel like, a, uh, you know. So why I wanted to say that is about the corrections and why it's wrong. You might feel like, oh, you guys are so mean or, or so picky. Yes. Uh, the thing is, the language itself is impeccable. Like the writing, you guys uh, read it and you know that, mm. right? That's not my expertise. If I uh, write it like a translate, I would not be on the same level as the English. There, oh, that's yeah. full recognition. Mm. What I'm picking on is just the, the, the translation. And it's not a full message. It's nothing like what we just went through the China tea. Mm. It's little things. And only the trickiest little, passages. Yes, You'll only a little bit. Mm. And uh, it's my advantage is I know tea. I know a little bit Chinese, a little bit English. So that's my advantage. And uh, his advantage is his impeccable English. Okay, so mm. recognize the good, the shortcomings good as well. It's mm. not to, and it's not criticize this. And also, his in terms writing of, is bad or anything. Yes. It's not like that. Just want accurate information. And in terms of recognizing the good, also the un, as an undertaking, it's gargantuan to uh, to dive into something this technical, um, because and and you know, so kudos for that as well. It's mm. a great paper and. It would be in our classification of only exists in Chinese and would be a lot different exercise for us. So it is a great piece of work. It is linked down below. So if you want to check out the link and mm -hmm. grab the document for yourself down below, I'll only be pulling it up every now and then on the screen to have a look at it. So if you want to actually read the section we're going through today, check the link down below, grab it, get it up mm -hmm. on the side, put it right beside us or wherever you'd like to keep that. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll come back to the comments a little later, I think. Let's dive in. Let's get on with it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the uh, sound effect, right? There we go. All right. And I got to get my version. I'm going to test out my pen. So here we are reading uh, T classification in theory and in practice. Oh, yeah. I got new tricks up my sleeve. All right. Last week, we went over uh, the beginning, mm -hmm. which we've got the highlighting all saved here. We covered T nomenclature in our uh, second session. And today we are covering the basis for classifying T. Awesome. Does this work? Oh no. Technical difficulties. Oh no, I think I just do this and it will work. Beautiful. Okay, it's gonna work. Good. Okay, so um, I don't think we need to be here. I just wanted to get it ready. Let's go. Um, Let's go okay. back here. Okay, and so we're going to get started. You're going to summarize. <laughs> I actually noticed a mini mistake was made. So we're just going through two uh, paragraphs today because it's, I think first it's a very, uh, there are some interesting things oh, that yeah. we want to talk about. And I believe those are interesting things will provoke, provoke a lot of discussion on the, the, the chat. So I'd like to hear you guys thoughts too. So yeah, for I, sure. These are deep, but we should have done three paragraphs because the third paragraph is together with this part. Anyways, we'll see where we and, are. And just because if you guys see it, 
I'll just say that those are three Chinese paragraph. It's a lot oh, more. It's a lot. You're yeah, going to see lots why, more than why. three. I forgot. So, I forgot. No, yes. no, it's okay. It's just so that they don't think, hey, what was she talking about? We're on like paragraph seven. Yes, or yes. I don't think see, there's that's that another thing. I really love the the yeah. translator did a great job to in terms of a habit of a paragraphing. Even its mm -hmm. English style didn't follow the Chinese of this as a paragraph. So yeah. uh, though well I'm done. talking about two paragraphs in Chinese, I think it's a three, four paragraphs in uh, English. Mm -hmm. So first of all, it points out. Uh, so uh, Professor Chen Chuan points out that uh, the fundamental thing about the tea is uh, food and the basic difference is quality and uh, char characters or characteristics mm -hmm. of the same. So the whole, this whole section we're going to read today and in the next few weeks is about the uh, basics of uh, categorization mm -hmm. and today we're going to dive into the very foundation of uh, categorization which classification, is classification yeah uh, yes uh, classification which is the process mm. so he explains a little bit why the process is the foundation of this whole uh, classification and of course in future weeks we'll read about other consideration and why just the process is not sufficient it's like you know the majority the main thing is the process but not all yes sorry i was doing a bit of comment preview yeah yeah so i can flow later but yes okay. so this is what today is all about mm -hmm. and um i think one of the uh so shall we just dive in then yeah Awesome. So one of the main difference to get started with that was uh, that we noticed that needed to be clarified if you're reading along with us from the link down below is uh, the use of the word character is really tricky mm. because it's used throughout the next couple paragraphs. As you see, I've, uh, I've kind of changed my method. So I think you guys, oh, they cannot see the hover. Oh, that's a bummer. So on my screen, when I hover on character that's crossed out, it shows me uh, quality. So let me... Oh, they cannot see the node. There we go. Oh, okay. So I double click and then they can see yes. it. But, but it's not a straight swap, okay? So what I mean is in this instance of the word character, quality would have been a better choice, of course, in my opinion. And same thing over here uh, on the second one. Um, but in other times, you'll see I didn't cross it out, mm -hmm. so that's that's uh, on purpose. So we have to be careful when we see the word character here. It sometimes refers to the T's quality, and it sometimes does refer to its characteristics. Maybe a better way to phrase it. Yes, because in Chinese, the the word pinzhi could mean character, characteristics, or quality depends on the whole sentence. Mm. So uh, that's why uh, in this part, it's all translated as a character, but certain times uh, when you read it, it more it leaning towards meaning quality mm -hmm. rather than that's just right. character yeah. or characteristics. Right, and, and you can see clearly here in terms that the quality is good or bad. Mm. And I highlighted this part here because this is something I think you've heard us repeat over and over if, you're, uh, if you've been watching different videos on the mm -hmm. channel. And that is that um, uh, quality differences or character, this one probably could have been left, characteristic differences are brought about more by differences in processing than by any other factor. There is a tendency uh, for people, and especially this is natural, right? You're getting into tea, you're excited about the different, the variety of cultivars that is immense, the variety of terroirs that is vast and, and uh, all, like just from all over. And those do play into the characteristics of your tea, but not, nothing, nothing compared with the processing technique. It is by far. So it's, it's uh, just wanted to emphasize that. Mm. Yes, I remember when, because uh, just a lot of times we, when we talk about tea, people talk about the uh, origin of terroir and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, 80, 90 percent of what we taste in the cup is the process. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, Taiwanese oolong tea we have on the market, are <laughs> majority comes from mainland China. But mm -hmm. It still tastes like a baihao oolong, still tastes like a hainan yes. oolong. Yes. Process is the primary mm. element that we're tasting. I, but all the other things. What? I wanted to use myself as a little example of that. Okay. Um, like in terms of uh, um, quality and uh, how good it is. For example, if I take premium, imagine somebody gave me premium material from Wii 
and I, do, I followed the rock tea process after a week of training, let's say, um, I would have at the end an absolutely awful rock tea. No matter how good the material was, even though it's from the best spot in Wuyi, it will be a disaster, an absolute disaster. Um, if I, uh, however, if I give some mediocre material to a master processor from Wuyi who's been making tea since he was four years old or something, and he processes this sort of four me years old, yeah, mediocre okay. leaf, you're gonna have something that's I'm gonna guess at least drinkable and possibly quite stunning. Mm. Um, because he will know how to assess the leaf right away. Okay, this leaf has these limits. Like the amount of detail they can go into is profound. Mm -hmm. um, and if you give him that amazing leaf that was given to me, you will have a mind-blowing tea. Mm. So anyway, I just wanted to make a little story about myself because I'm not a tea processor, but yeah, yeah. and producer. Not ju a tea producer. Yes, just to behold the rest of uh, that little new ones, new ones. Mm. Uh, is the terroir, is the mm. cultivar, is the age of the tea, all mm. those we mm. could mm. taste. Age of the push. Yes. Mm. We need lots of experience, training and a proper guide. It's not uh, as prominent as a lot of people think. Yes. Mm. I see some questions about the document online. It is a uh, PDF, so hopefully you can uh, read a PDF. Just uh, I'll just throw that out. We'll come back to that. Right. Maybe now's a good time to take a little break for uh, comments anyway. Okay. Let's pop out. Oh, we're already <laughs> popped out. <laughs> All right, let's go back. We're just gonna back up a bit and check the uh, comments. Where do we leave off? Oh yeah, I saw, I remember seeing stuff about Ooh. the coffee drinkers. Lots um, of right. here. Uh, and Cindy agrees that the dry leaf aroma of the uh, Huang Da Cha, we were talking about how bold that dry leaf aroma is. She mm. agrees. And uh, it's just so invigorating. And then uh, Kel, I hope I'm saying the name right, Kel159, even though I don't drink coffee, roasted kukicha stem tea has a kind of coffee note in my opinion. Yeah, that mm. is a good one. Yeah. I don't yeah. have it very often, but I wish I could try it a little bit more. Not very bold flavor or mouthfeel and low in caffeine. Right. That's going to be right. a problem, I think, for coffee drinkers. And I saw also uh, Fernanda mentioned Shupuar as well as a, mm. as a good coffee substitute. I would agree with that too in terms of its boldness and mouthfeel, but I'm a little nervous about the pick-me-up they might be looking for. Mm. So that might, I find, now this is interesting because for me, I find Shupuar and you, yeah. you find it. You can have any tea you want right before bed. I cannot... Mm. <laughs> She's got that amazing, doesn't matter. Well, she on got. the other hand, if I'm like sleepy, there's nothing that can pick me up. So pro and con. True, true. <laughs> How profound. At any rate, Shupuar for us, because I'm a little bit more caffeine sensitive, is our typical evening tea. So for me, it doesn't give me a big boost. But mm. I have talked to people who find Shupuar very like uplifting and invigorating. So. It's not, uh, it's not as easy as it, you know, it does or it doesn't. It's, it's how people individually react with the, right. with the tea as well. And uh, yeah, so that was Fernanda uh, with Shupuar being good for coffee drinkers. Mm -hmm. So you are calling for our dark tea. Uh, yes. Yes, yes we on are. Our, uh, on our, on our, yeah. on our yeah. website and channel. In general, we do sure. that, yeah. yeah. Including Hei Cha, mm -hmm. which is literally dark tea. Right. Um, and Clifford said, dark tea must be show Shen said that uh, they do not change category and Shen is green. Yes, if we continue reading, uh, Professional Chen Chuan has a very clear classification with uh, most of the discussion that you would encounter nowadays. Right. Mm. So I think I've been aging this by, so I insisted that Josh tell yeah, us yeah. how long he's aging this by Mudan. So he five thinks it's been about five, five and a half years now or so. Mm -hmm. Understandable, you know, if it's been tucked away somewhere and you kind of forgot about it, it makes sense that maybe the, uh, did you, hmm, what? your mom has a good trick for that and I'll share it with you guys because, and it's simple as anything, right? But when you tuck the tea away, you just take a little piece of paper, you write a little note on it with what it is and maybe the date. Mm. You stick that wherever it is, and then when you find it, and after forgetting about it for ten years, you you know, oh yeah, May uh, May nineteen seventy one. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's interesting. I'm always like that, like taking detailed notes. Yeah, I'm not. 
and he is like that, very mm. detailed nose, and I always love that. I don't know why. Just I don't know if I can get a very, but I pref I like to have detailed nose, but I often forget, so I end up in the same boat as her. But I I, I at least uh, intended that. She's like, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Okay, little discussion about Shen. Okay. I'm not, I'm just going to not go there right now because it is an interesting discussion, and we'll say, we're in the perfect paper to save that for later. So I'm just going to kind of mm -hmm. I'm not ignoring you, Fernanda, but yeah. I'm I'm just saying that that's a great point, and we'll come back to it. Huh? Nice on the Bai Mudan aging. Yes, indeed, five years. Ten is going to be amazing. Yes, I wonder how much he's got. Hopefully, you've got enough to kind of drag it out a bit longer, or hide it from yourself again for another five years and forget it. Like a charity. Right, and, and Ricky says that I'm sh I'm not sure about Shen, but is similar to green, but the leaves come from very old heirloom trees. Not necessarily. Um, just to say it can come from a young tree, can come from an old tree, mm. uh, etc. Yeah. Um, Fernanda and Clifford says, Hey Cha is piled tea in Puar. They throw away old green tea that we now call shoot. No, that's not right. That's Sorry. That's not quite right. <laughs> Sorry, oh, that's you know, different. That we now call Shen. They oh. threw away old green tea that we now call Shen. I'm not sure. Mm, that's also... Sound more like Huang Pian. Yeah, well, I think what you were saying might be Huang Pian. Mm. So, and old, by old. I noticed, because I always say old, but uh, mm. Phil point out, uh, by old in English, you, you need to people clarify. would think about uh, days old, not mature. But sometimes, because my uh, habit, sometimes I call mature leaves old. Mm hmm yeah so there's so many different access for old how yeah. old is the leaf was it a young leaf or an old leaf that's brittle yeah. and hard was the tree young or old is the tea the finished tea young or old so mm. it really got to be specific with age um, and Clifford had a good book mm -hmm. yeah let us did he say the title um, interesting good book on this Puar is Puar ancient caravans mm, learn a great oh, deal okay. interesting maybe that'll maybe mm. I'll check it out I haven't seen that one Wow, even the heated dry leaf of this tea blows my mind. Okay, we're back to Josh's 5.5 .5 year. Let's check out the notes. Sweet peas sauteed in butter. Ooh, Ooh, that's a great note. That's a really good note. What does that smell like? It's. I'm going to guess it's got okay. that buttery, creamy. You really have to have that dish to know what that smells yeah, like. Yeah, no, buttery, like, creamy with a little bit of that sweet green. You know, I think that's what he's going for. The ring. I yes. know that. Raw bird verdant and snow peas. It's snow definitely got some of that green Ooh. smell and probably creamy and buttery. Oh, I very love it. fancy, very nice. Oh, maybe maybe Fernando was talking about the book Clifford's referring to as an e-book. Uh, very fresh green, but also creamy and buttery from the aging. Oh, I hadn't read ahead, but he gave us more. Uh, he uh, elaborated a little bit. And the wet leaf aroma is so strong, just like strong white peonies in the garden in the rain. Oh, nice. Enjoy that. Wow. Um, don't worry, people can't pronounce my name from the first time, but you're spot on. Oh, yay! It's a Swedish name, but my native, uh, but in my native language, Dutch, it's pronounced the way you pronounced it. Okay, okay, I'll call that close enough, and thanks for giving me the tip. I love to give it a shot to try and get people's names right. You're really good with uh, that. That trick worked at my place for 17 years. I don't know what trick we're talking about. I missed that one. Okay. Ooh, very smart. I can actually did include a piece of paper in my tea jar, but just the name and origin. Right. Yeah, it's easy to forget when you're, when you're so excited, you put it away, but white, green, and oolong stored that way. Mm. Oh, the trick of labeling, I think, maybe. Ah, I'm not sure. I need to learn. I, I just need to do it. I don't know what's my... Mm, hey, law. yeah, and Clifford says that uh, he wished we would talk on Discord about HR. Hey loads of thoughts. This is the place. Let's talk about them now. It's really mm, it's, and there uh, are lots of uh, other people who can uh, throw in their what they know yeah, and their yeah. thoughts on the topic. Yeah, so we'd love to chat about that. This is definitely the right spot right here, right now. So let's do it. Mm. Um, Age white smells like butter, buttery cookies and dry mm -hmm. yellow fruits. Yes, yes, it can. I love that butter cookie smell. Mm, I often use that. Dry yellow fruit. Oh, like I did I kind of skipped over that. Oh, okay, I'm not okay. sure what. Because that's no, no, the part we should that ask. I I'm not sure. resonates more like a dry fruit, like for oh, me really? with apricot. Like it really has oh, that, that dry be, fruit thing. Yes, yes, that must be what you mean, like right. apricot or yeah, it's peach. I think yellow because, fruit only banana, but it's actually oh. the fruit is white. Only the peel <laughs> is yellow. So I don't think you meant dried bananas. I think I, I think you're more in the zone with the dried <laughs> apricot, 
dried peach. He's those crazy kind of about things. banana. Okay. I'm a little bit fond of bananas. Mm. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a monkey. He doesn't split one banana like split one banana with me. That's not gonna happen. All right. That kind. Of yeah, I re I don't like to share bananas. They're <laughs> I mean they're the perfect personal sized fruit. Right. All right. But it's so. really interesting because I don't quite get that buttery thing. That's all. Like I mean I don't I. Just, it's okay. You know, like a, I don't understand. I look at all. it like more of a creaminess, like a creamy with that tone of. Uh, mm. But I don't know. Maybe next time we we have that together and I notice it, I'll mm. I'll point it out and see if we yeah, can nail yeah. it down. All right, let's dive back in okay. to the uh, text. Which nothing's gonna happen. I'm not gonna change the screen, but maybe no. later. stay tuned. Watch out. <gasps> I lost my note. Oh, your Can highlights? Can you pull up the English? Yeah, I, I don't know why my, my version wasn't uploaded. Oh, sure, no Apricot problem. Apricot scones and aged white. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, what nice. I was thinking too. Apricot scones. Oh, mm. that's a great tasting note. Mm. Or just a great thing to have. I'm a little bit hungry now. I hope I can try those yashishung. yashishung blah, blah. We're going to have that after. Peanuts. The peanuts. <laughs> yeah. And the le a little bit later in the paragraph is talk about how the the like the order how the T category emerges must be made mm. uh, must be used as the order in which the T's are classif classified mm. Mm. again so what he says is it what he what he says I just want to repeat right. that to make sure I understood but he says that the um, um, the the way that the teas were made throughout history mm. is the way we should classify them. Is that right, Quina, or yeah. a little bit off? The, it's mm, not sorry. about the <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do much better in the end. No. What I mean is it's not about what or not. It's just that sometimes in terms of a tone, uh, for what's a must in Chinese is, should be, ought All to right. be. Like a, there's a sometimes, a, I don't know, like I don't, uh, I feel like sometimes it sounds really harsh in English. I don't know if you guys have felt that as a must be made order. I really right. feel really right. a strong, firm idea, but it's more of a it should be, right. like a, ought to be like that. Right. So there's a little tone difference, not a major thing. It's just a lot of, uh, because of how in the Chinese version it used that, I think it appears in the article quite often as a must be, right. something like that. A lot of them was more of a, it should be like this. So yes. I think there is a tonal difference up yeah. to you to uh, decide. Yeah. yeah, I felt like that was really strong. And uh, especially in an academic paper where must is pretty much uh, an imperative. So uh, I think that's a good one. I just brought it up so they can see the exact must we're talking about is that must be made in the order which T's are arranged in classification. So mm -hmm. in Chinese, that was more like a, a should. It could have been a should or maybe somewhere in between, right? Uh, should would also work. So I feel like maybe we don't have the in-between word. Mm. All right. And then this. Mm. Yeah, and then we get into the processing methods which define the classification. Right. So the only, um, the, we, the very first uh, mm, mistake, not quite a mistake. It's uh, the very first thing. So last week we talked mm. about quantitative to qualitative change on the paper. Right, that I was the first introduction. I wasn't fully yeah. sold on does quantitative or qualitative means quantitative change yeah. or quality change, like quality-ish means the, that. I, I know that it means in, certain, in terms of research, you don't really cross two ways of a research. Quantitative is quantitative, number-based analyze, mm -hmm. but qualitative is more of an interpretation, kind of mm -hmm. simply mm -hmm. speaking. Then this appears again in this session, and we had a, a, a long, a talk, long about talk about it. And realize in English, it doesn't mean... So in yeah. Chinese, there are multiple words, like that same word have multiple meanings, mm. which means the change of quantity becomes the change of its quality. That's what it means. But when that word also could mean quantitative or qualitative. So that's mm. why in the translation, if you trans, uh, here it says a quantitative change become qualitative. Yeah, it sounds kind here. of a wrong. 
Yeah, it, and it, this took us a bit of discussion to figure out because it's, it, it came back to the same question we had last week is was how does that work that a quantitative change becomes qualitative? It's not at it's all. It's not quite that. It's not a, how the research of a method change or anything like that. It simply means the accumulation, right? Yeah. The quantity change gradually, gradually cause the fundamental change. Yeah, that's they right. Call, I love how Chinese, you described it as a tipping point, right? Yes, it changes almost mm. like, you know, uh, I was explaining that like using cancer, like we don't perfectly healthy in one day and next day I'm diagnosed as a mm. cancer patient. Mm. There is a long time when, why? Is this a bit of a morbid me metaphor, but it oh, works, sorry. it works. But what I mean <laughs> is like, because disease takes time, but yeah. uh, the diagnose of a showing on paper on that uh, number shows, mm. A cancer kind of thing is yeah. that um, a number past the yes. threshold yes but it has been developing but same with other right. things or like, it just goes from unmeasurable to suddenly measurable yes like uh, you know be a good painter or something like you need analyst practice kind right. of a thing right. to right. be good so the context here um which, which that was a great metaphor but the context <laughs> here is back to that sort of um, that classification by the by how they appear in history. Well, how does that happen? It's sort of a incremental change, incremental change. The T is made this way, but then there's an incremental change or a few villages over, it's a little different. Mm. And the, these incremental changes add up to where there's a tipping point uh, is what it's talking about. So uh, in this context, I believe, right? Over an extended period, the sequence continues, characters change, and then boom, suddenly at some time, Oh, I think I even gave, let me just double click this because, so here's how I would have wrote it. And maybe you don't agree, but we say these incremental changes accumulate over time until at some point the old category becomes a new one. All right. So there you go. Yes. This was a really interesting. It's because point. the Chinese uh, mm. word was, uh, has multiple meanings. Yeah. 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 All right, so that was, and you can, uh, you can go back and check out last week's qualitative quantitative discussion. I mm. think we kind of missed it at that point. We hadn't, it took us a bit of a deep dive to unwind that, right? Yes, so yes. I, yeah, so. And I have to really look to see, you know, if there's a multiple meanings that I just didn't know mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, so um, yeah, it turns out there wasn't in English, right? So we had to uh, re, kind of reword it fully. Right, right. And, Shall I just continue? Yeah, I was going to jump into <laughs> comments, but continue for a bit and then we'll go back and uh, try and... Right, right. Oh. Did I interrupt you? No, no, no. You continue and then we go oh, to comments. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> so later on, and talk about uh, uh, fermentation. When talk about uh, when was uh, using uh, green tea as uh, or black tea, sorry, mm. even uh, black tea. Here in this particular when it says red tea is uh, what we commonly call black tea. Well, the black tea right. in the paper is what we commonly call dark tea. Right. Just, uh, just remind you of that. Mm. And it used a fermentation, which we think is more appropriate to say, like oxidation. State. Right, no, yeah, definitely. Fermentation, definitely. there is no fermentation for black tea. Mm -hmm. And it mentioned that a yellow alkyne, yellow alkyne alcohol. Right, yellow alkane alcohols. <laughs> yeah, so it's a translation of Chinese because mm -hmm. Chinese call that as a huang wan tong. Uh, so it's a flavonoid. Fla flavonoids. Flavonoids. Mm. Flavonoids. And in bracket, that's the funny thing. It's this is a, interesting. It says yeah. uh, several teas are polyphenols. But in Chinese, it's just uh, in the bracket, it was uh, tea polyphenols. Several T's, I think, was the mistranslation because the character R is very similar to the mm. character Z, which means several. Yeah. There's only mini difference in the writing. So I think it could be like uh, the printing wasn't very good. So uh, he thought it was uh, the other character, but uh, there's no several T's. Yeah, in it's bracket just... of explaining what uh, flavonoids are. in T is T polyphenols mm. is mentioned here. Right. Yeah. That's the, uh... yes. I don't know if we should, uh, so that was the area with the, um, 
with the T term. So that was really tricky and it's a pretty good job. But like you said, the I, she even showed me the character. It was really tricky and easy to miss. We already mentioned fermentation and there's, uh, they also talk about a particular enzyme that's active and we felt like that was actually, it feels like the enzyme's just there and it's, it's kind of active doing something when we didn't do anything, but actually it should be stimulated. It's actually, mm -hmm. we're acting on it to make, to encourage it to do something. Yes. Right, we're talking about black tea in this section, mm -hmm. in this paragraph. So, um, you know, we're not just letting the tea sit there and and the enzyme is active. It's we're stimulating this enzyme to be, you know, kind of hyperactive, I guess. Mm. Yes. Let's look at the comment. I, I yeah, see some tons good of questions comments here. here. Yeah. So I see com. Uh, I'm just out of order. I'm gonna go back up a bit. Yeah. Uh, apricot scones. I think we're in the zone. Right. And Josh is being esoteric, but such a strong sense of memory for me when I bought the best, freshest peas I ever had from Holland Marsh, driving home from the north, gently butter poached them. Ah, so it's a personal flavor note, which is exactly how a flavor note should be. Yeah, That's I love awesome. That. Yeah. And uh, Fernanda says, Josh, this is why uh, so funny tom tree tea to try. Everyone will bring different memories. Yeah. Mm, yes, same. Uh, in Tea Party, we'll have different stories. Yes. I and, uh, so we have a question here from Time Signature. I saw this a while ago. This is a really good one. When it comes to Chinese post-fermented tea, do they distinguish, do they distinguish between aerobically fermented and anaerobically fermented? So I love this question. This is a good one. Mm. I think that it happens at the same time. There is no strict uh, thing. Think about piling, mm. right? There's nothing that seals it. They need, uh, right. they need oxygen for sure. There's no fermentation like in Shufuar or dark tea that is fully sealed, avoid that. However, in the center of the pile, mm. it could be a little bit more. Yeah, like I was gonna come at it from a, right. a slightly different angle, but um, I think that's a perfect answer. It's uh, I like... <laughs> really similar to like uh, making compost. Right. You got with, a turn. It's almost... <laughs> with, with the exception that it's really technical. Yes. And so is it, they don't distinguish, is it aerobic, is it anaerobic, but they do dial in the fermentation so that it's uh, drinkable. Yes. Because if they mess if it, it up... If it's too it's, fast, it's not going to work. If it's mm. too slow, it's also not going to work. Yeah, it's, so it's in, because all the tea process are not developed in the lab to say, mm. okay, <laughs> you know, like... Uh, 80% right? of uh, yeah. uh, an aerobic uh, fermentation mm -hmm. will result in this note, uh, this mm -hmm. percent, that's why we do this in this way. It's not quite like that. It's the reverse way mm -hmm. of uh, doing that, then analyze, oh, this mm -hmm. is what happened. So, and in reality, in, in practice, it happens more, like both ways. That's right, yeah. And that's what... I think Chen Chuan also mentions this too, that one of the, like earlier, if you were here for the other episodes, why is it so complicated to classify tea? It's precisely that. It's mm. because it's happening organically. It's happening in the field. People are just making tea that's good. It's pleasing. It's fun to drink. Mm. And sometimes they're similar and sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. And they're changing over time. And now you've got to go backwards and look at this. We have thousands and thousands of different teas, a bunch of different styles of making it. How do we organize this, right? It's a right. daunting task. So um, that's the beauty of tea, though, is that organic evolution. Um, all right. Great question, though, with time signature. Holy awesome question, Batman. Mm. Great one. <laughs> um, and Fernanda says, man, we could program a virtual tea party video call. Mm -hmm. I think we should do that. I think we should do that on Discord. So let me move over to that. Boom. So if you're not on Discord, join Discord and let's program a virtual yeah. tea party. We'll have some tunes. We'll have some tea. We'll have some fun. I love that idea. I was on there the other day listening to some music, hoping some people would pop in with some hair metal, but I just listened to jazz instead. Fusion, actually, which was awesome. It's kind of like jazz hair metal. Okay, Clifford, when does compressed tea change from old green tea to shampooar? Chung says never. Up to 1950, old green tea was thrown away. Mm. Piled pickled hay chat is always fermented pickled. Mm. I'm going to leave that to you. Mm. This is a very interesting. They didn't change. First, mm. I don't know exactly what you mean by old. Second, mm. Shen Pu'er, to be specific, categorization is 
a kind of a green tea. If you want to be very systematic, we mm. put that mm. in dark tea is just our habit, mm. right? Uh, because we're in general considered Region as that. Pool, yeah, yeah, so we just put it in dark tea. Uh, you can feel free to criticize, but I'm just stuck that there for now. Mm. Okay, so if you want to be really systematic and if you re continue to read this paper, you will notice the Chen Chuan very clearly said, and based on the process, based on the taste note, based on everything, not much uh, discussion on that, that uh, Shen Puar is a green tea, a type mm. of green tea. Mm. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's okay. it. That's it. Yeah. Um, but it's, I guess the one thing you could say about it is it's a green tea that you can age. Which is not normal. Like if we age, you know a, why? Because of the process. It it's because it's, it's a bad green tea. Yeah, it wasn't a fully cool green. <laughs> That's why you could do that, yes. right? Yeah. It's the same with white tea. You could age that to the cool mm. green. There's no cool green white tea. Right, but right. Shufu, why poor could do that? Because the cool green wasn't complete. Yeah, I like to joke like that. Yeah. Because it's a bad green tea. Anyway. So um, here we go. Second, second infusion, infusion from Josh is strong. Let's talk about our infusion. Oh, we're going to catch up here. Mm -hmm. So he's got a nice strong from his white tea. Flavors of freshly steamed courgette. That's fancy word for zucchini. Ooh. What and honey syrupy sweetness. Glad I finally crit, caved, it, caved to brew some up. Yeah, isn't that funny how it, it, you kind of have to... I have that too where I, you know... We, for example, we had Guju Zasun the other day mm -hmm. for, with our breakfast. It's been, it's been there for a while. I look at it every morning and I love that tea and I'm like, ooh, it's too good. What's the matter with my brain? Mm -hmm. Of course, it's too good. It's supposed to be drunk. Anyway, good for you, Josh, for pulling it out and drinking it finally. Mm. Quantitative change issues sounds like a spectrum where blue changes to green or orange to red. Mm. I think that's kind of what he's getting at is that t temporal shift. Yes. That at a certain point, we we draw a line and say mm -hmm. this is where the there is a difference. Mm -hmm. I think he means tea was black or green, too tight as quantities later characterized by quality parameters, immeasurable as you correctly stated. Mm. Despite the somber, oh, she thought that that was a good <laughs> metaphor. The whole uh, cancer no, no, metaphor. Said, I should use artist. Tipping point. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds more uplifting. How many blue teas are there? One. Quantity. Now there are dozens. Quality. Huh? I'm not sure I understand that. Time signature. Question. Those multiple meanings of the same word, are they concept conceptually related to each other? Multiple. Sometimes, yes. I think that you uh, mean right. those uh, Chinese word, how uh, different it is. Yes, sometimes they're almost like a metaphor, could be metaphoric-ish. Mm. Sometimes they're... Uh, not very related. Mm. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a tricky. And sometimes it's similar to English. You could have a certain term, like a 质变到量变, that's a philosophical term. Which appears here, right? Which appears here is what that literally means. 质变到量变, it's a... That's the qualitative becomes quantitative. Yes, mm. kind of thing, which means the quantity change eventually become the quality change kind of thing. Right. But, tipping uh, point, I think, is the best sort of... Tipping point, yeah. Because uh, it is philosophical in a way. It, it's like like the pile. It's actually talking about the... the when, when does a tip grain of sand... Something. Yeah, when does three... When do the number of grains of sand become a pile? Where does that tip? Yes. Right? It's that kind of yes. philosophical expression. Yeah. So hopefully that elucidated that. Again, well. just the, so our language is more like a wordy, explanatory, not as concise and act like a, a, a academically uh, appropriate because we just have the leisure to do a video to explain. It's mostly I care more about the clarity. Mm, uh, right. So I Clifford. think that he chose the word for the conciseness, for the paperish kind of feeling. There's right. A, could, it, be just that right and again I don't know how English uses words it could be mm. very different than here in Canada or yeah academic word mm. to common people word yeah. kind of thing so yeah absolutely I just think uh, I think undertaking just all those elements has to be considered sometimes when yeah you read absolutely absolutely and just undertaking such a translation with so many T terms and so many technical terms is mm. really impressive Right. Clifford points out something really interesting about the word flavonoids. 
mm. um, which it comes from the Latin flavus, which is yellow, which ah. comes right back to the Chinese Maybe word for flavonoid. Maybe that's why Chinese was called the Huang Wan Tong. Yeah, very likely. Mm. Um, and Macmillan says, trying, try drinking tea playing Native American flute music. Try. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> drinking tea playing. Playing. Native oh. American flute music. Did, I guess he meant playing. The A was missing. Yeah, I think so. So that, that would make for bubbly flute sounds, I think, because <laughs> the T would be in the flute. Time signature, temporal shift. Sounds like we're in the middle of a Star Trek episode. Yes, <laughs> we are. I wish I had a transporter effect. I could make us switch spots like with it. I'm going to work on that. Kiel says, I play Shaku Hachi. If you know the instrument by chance, sounds like a Japanese flute. It's a traditional Japanese end blown flute, but you need an embouchure. So it's more challenging, like a real flute, right? Like a kind of that thing with your lips, the Andean flute. Oh, cool. Right. Is it like, it's kind of like whistling and smiling. It sounds like you probably can't drink tea and play that flute. Oh. And Jumai Jia says some Chinese words make allusion to stories or proverbs that you have no idea why they use that term. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's one of the beauties of the language, <laughs> right? And Time Ninja says, I was asking about the conceptually related meanings to gauge whether it was a case of poly pol polysemy. I, what does that word mean? I don't know. Sorry, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> a multiple, I'm not sure what it means. You gotta dumb it down for me. Yeah, you gotta dumb it, <laughs> you gotta dumb it down for me too, buddy. I'm a, I'm a hair metal guy for a reason. All right, well, you tell us what polysemy, polysemy, mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm going to say something that sounds uh, nasty trying to pronounce that word, but mm -hmm. uh, polysemy, polys, polysemy. I'm not sure where the emphasis goes in that word. That's the tricky part here. Right. English has that emphasis, which is so annoying. All right, let's dive back in. Um, I'll get us into the right spot here. So yeah, we covered the quantitative qualitative. Now we're into You're right. The English is very long here. Mm, yeah. Oh, many. there's one uh, kind of a, the, the official like a official mistake that in English means the opposite of Chinese. Oh, this is when a big they one. talk about uh, do not eliminate the rank vegetative smell of the leaf. Mm. I'm just going to show them where yeah, that is because this one's important. Be easy. Really important. Well, in Chinese, it actually means we do that. The purpose mm. Right here, guys. This one, so what it says is the yellow alkane alcohols are not oxidized. This is what is written. Mm -hmm. And do not eliminate the rank vegetative smell of the leaf. This is actually full backwards. So I'm going to bring up my, uh, my version and put it right over. So it's actually should say in the process of eliminating the rank vegetative smell, kill green, mm -hmm. the flavonoids, sorry, I spelled it wrong, <laughs> are prevented from oxidizing. Yes. Let me erase my mistake so nobody... Oh yeah, that's why I didn't fix it because all that all Google could tell me was, is, did you mean solenoids? No, I did not. I meant flavonoids. <laughs> the flavonoids are prevented from oxidizing. Okay, so this one, and it was, can you explain why? Because it was an understandable mistake, I think. It wasn't like, oh, they missed a boot, missed a... It's pretty it's, tricky, right? Or Again, this language is kind of a weird to put the stuff. Use of language, We right? use mm. the whole thing, stop. It means uh, stop this oxidation using the whole phrase to describe this Kilgrain process. Uh, right. That's why in terms of, a, I really love how he translated a Kilgrain in proper English, like a full translate. What is a Kilgrain about? It is to uh, eliminate the rank vegetative smell right. of yeah. the leaves. Yeah. And if you want to be even more specific, use heat. How do you do Kilgrain is what type of heat we're using. So that's, uh, I really love that translation, but just this part is the opposite of uh, the Chinese. Right. Like means we do that, do the yeah. kilgrain to yeah. stop the oxidation. Yeah. It's kind not, of the, do not do the, kilgrain. the sentence structure and way of writing was mm. different, which made it a little bit obscure. Yes. Easy, easily understandable. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so, and also uh, here, remember everywhere where you see black in the document, you'll need to change that to dark tea mm. or hei cha. Um, um, and again, uh, they're piled up to produce color or they're just piled up. To That's ferment. a T term. Yeah. Yes. It's just a means of ferment. Just in Chinese, uh, the words have the, co the character color in it. We call that a uh, word. But, uh, it's not a uh, coloring or stuff. Um, 
again, language a habit of uh, mm -hmm. not really translate word by word, especially when it's a term. Right, right. You know, like a magazine. That's what the first revelation I had when I was in uh, uh, oh, really? learning English. Yeah, I was watching the SWAT team uh, doing something. Anyway, <laughs> so they talk about uh, the rookie dropped the magazine. I was like, what? I didn't know those people on mission could bring magazine, read right. on the car until they on the scene and stuff. I realized, okay, magazine also means something in the gun. I didn't know that, but right, you right. see, if magazine, the, if I just drop the word by itself, most people would think about it. The book, reading, right? right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So Unless just to say, fairly it's less used. So lots of Chinese were like that too. Right. Right. Movie. With the produced color word. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So. Um, That's it for today's. Uh, no, 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 reading, no, 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 huh? not yet, not yet. Huh? We've got this section here. We're getting into the part where we. Um, I put a stop sign, don't worry, oh. we know when we're done. Oh yeah, you put a stop sign. Oh, maybe we didn't make the mistake you thought then. That's good. So um, wow. we're getting to the part where, uh, which was related to tea trivia, where we're going to yes, talk yeah. about, uh, <laughs> and this is, this is a really key understanding of uh, tea categories and tea processing. Mm -hmm. And if you, we were saying like, and you don't need to dive in in this much detail to just mm -hmm. enjoy tea. But if you want to hit that first level mm -hmm. of, uh, of being able to identify tea on taste and appearance and whatnot, this is a great, um, a great paradigm, a great way of thinking, a great truism about tea, which is that the, uh, if their teas are similar in character, then the processing method was similar or the same, mm -hmm. or the type of tea is the same. So that's kind of the foundation of this of these six T categories, right? Mm -hmm. And and the reverse is true. I think it's a, an important notion for people mm. to know. Uh, the mm. though the 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 the, the, the mo most common logical way is this tea is a process like that. So that's why we taste that. But the reverse also works. Sometimes uh, we might not think no. like that. That's it's, right. I taste this tea. This could mean this kind of process. Mm. That's why when we taste tea a lot of times, we kind of know, uh, people were like, kind of like, oh, how can I taste the tea and mm. know what's wrong with the process? Mm. Because from the end product, I can yes. tell what, how it was processed in general. Yeah, I was about to say that right. that's the extreme example is like you or your mom, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, it's taking me time. <laughs> You're pretty it, good. It will take time and this is, and it is, so first you taste it, you can identify green, oolong, black, white, dark, yellow. That's fantastic. Then you meet somebody like Jen Li Wu who's been tasting tea or Jen tasting tea for decades in the field at all stages of processing, good tea, bad tea, mediocre tea, perfect tea. And she can say, oh, this one has a little bit of trouble with the kill green and maybe the drying was off. Like it's, it seems like magic when you see that, mm. when you see that level of understanding. But so like you said, we often think it's one way. No, yeah. you can taste and go backwards too to the type yeah, of Yeah, that's actually very good because uh, uh, according to what you said, when, I, when we just started the business, I remember there are like, uh, mm. there are people trying to... Uh, you mean the Canadian my, business, right? The North yes, American. Yes, the North right, American. Right. Here is uh, mm. a lot of times when people talk about Chinese tea producers or stuff, we somehow give it a misty, not misty, sorry, mystical. mysterious, mystical feeling yeah. that they can taste the tea Almost and know shamanic, right? what's the weather is plucked. So like, a, right. uh, well, I personally like to demystify, mm. like a clear up why it is, make that more commonly known. If you 10,000 like hours, folks. Simple. It's mastery over yes. practice, focused yes. practice. Well, to simplify, so, to because of the so day, boring. no, like uh, people say, oh, they can taste the tea and know the day is a plug, that mm. is a raining. Why? Because of the water content in the leaf is different. It affects mm. its aroma. It affects how it could be processed. Mm. It affects the mm. end result, mm. right? To, to be simplified because of the sunny days and rainy days, they have different moisture level. Right. And that results in the final tea. But uh, all I'm saying is uh, a lot of things that sounds mystic or stuff, it's just years of a practice. Mm -hmm. Then they start mm -hmm. to notice this kind of thing. It's yep. not uh, just uh, 
you know, what? I want to say something because I see in the chat music, music is starting to pop out again. Oh, that's great. And that's a, that's a great metaphor though because you watch somebody who's played you know, who's played guitar for like 10,000 hours, like somebody who's a master on the guitar, you see them play and you think they're magical. What they do is inhuman. It's mm. exactly the same phenomena, but applied to taste buds instead of fingers blistering over metal strings or nylon, possibly. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's a great, I want to get back to the comments in a minute, but we'll, uh, um, I think we're pretty much done are we here. pretty much done, yeah. Yeah. Just so here, season the red tea in the car right. always means the Gong Fu black tea. Yeah. And in terms of what's a small seed, that's a red bit of subtle. Tea, yeah. That's a lot uh, Su Chong. Mm. Uh, we have a great episode of a China tea book explaining mm. the difference in Su Chong, uh, Gong Fu tea, the tea category in mm. China. What are the different types of uh, black teas? That's so right. I think yeah. that would be a great uh, reference point. That's it. That is a great one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And good, shall good. We? So shall we hit some comments? Mm -hmm. Let's go to this thing so people can uh, get on the Discord because I see more talk of music, which means we're gonna have a tea party soon. Right. Um, I'm gonna, where was I? Fipple. Shall I think I we're in those. It's not a transverse flute. Yeah, it's more right. like you play it like a recorder. I kind of got that because you said end blown. So that kind of um, means not like this, but like this. Uh -huh. um, Ah, but it's not like, so there's a little talk about flute. Right. Um, Cindy says, I always thought Kilgreen was to stop the oxidation. Why I thought it was none of the above. I think in that question, it was too. all of the above actually. But anyway, I'm not sure. But Cindy, you have a really good point here. Mm. More, I, I guarantee you, you ask those people who are more advanced in tea here, a lot of them will tell you was to stop oxidation. I think there is a, we talked about this this we morning, did. just actually, this morning, a, because it's not wrong. It's not wrong, but, but, it, but in it's terms not of why, the, right? Yes, yes. Chemically, yes, this stops the oxidation. There's nothing wrong with what you said and uh, say, it's just a, why people do it. Again, tea is not developed in, in the, lab. the lab. So the farmers wasn't like about oxidation mm -hmm. level, you know, it wasn't about, uh, I don't want to oxidize those leaves or anything. It's mm -hmm. about, oh, those taste pretty good. Those taste Tinkle. how we could, right? Mm. So they do that just to eliminate the purpose of why they add this stuff. Again, farmers and ancient farmers isn't uh, talking about oxidation. It's talking about uh, that taste. We don't like that. Mm -hmm. As you probably know, Chinese stir fry green a lot. Though we <laughs> eat salad, but not a, a lot. So leafies all kinds of greens we stir fry we cook them to get rid of that similar mm -hmm. with the tea that's why we have this stop uh, this uh, step and later on when we have tea studies have tea majors in different institutes and universities mm -hmm. we learn oh while well, we do this it stops oxidation right so uh and a lot of times we talk to modern people who is more like a this kind of thinking is just to say, okay, this, uh, yeah, kill so green. It explains what happens. Yes, what happened, not why not we're why doing Not why we that. do it, right? Yes. The why we do it actually harkens back to the, the taste preferences of the producers mm -hmm. and of the people buying the tea. They mm -hmm. want to sell the tea, they got to get rid of that stinking green smell. Yeah, so they what you like said it. isn't wrong. It's just which angle we're mm -hmm. explaining this kill green thing. Mm -hmm. mm. So I kind of want to explain that stinky green smell because I'm not sure if it's, it's clear. It took, because it caught me by surprise back when we were early together, I was eating more salad at that time. I, <laughs> but it's- You really have to eat a cooked uh, 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 veggies for a while to know. And mm. that's almost and that's when across I start to get the border. It. Either it's kale, it's bok choy, it's a, anything. They all have a little like, yeah, we there's... call that shen wei. But even when I eat like raw snow peas, yeah, yeah, I also have that. That has that. So if you and it's not mean it could be just that uh, the green thing. What's I think called? it's maybe related. I don't know if what anyway. it's. I asked about it. I'm not sure chemically. I don't mm. want to go there and just be totally wrong. Mm. But if you want to know what that sort of chingto, that green stink, I think that means. Yes, green peas has a really strong. Yeah, voice. like snap peas snap or peas. or yeah. raw peas the snap, one, uh, the snap peas yeah, yeah snap, snap peas have that and if you cook them it's gone 
So if you're, you know, mm, you to, if you want to differentiate between what is the snappy flavor and what is the stinky green that we're talking about here, cook some, keep mm -hmm. some raw, taste them. Mm -hmm. You'll see the similarity and you'll notice the difference. So uh, that was helpful for me to kind of learn what you mm. mean. Because when we got to the field and, and we're brewing tea at various phases, it's the tea still has that. And I was able to say, oh, I mm. taste that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the kill green's not quite done yet. It's gonna go back for another round or something. Mm -mm. Anyway, yeah. great question, Cindy. I really I'm glad you if ever there's a tea trivia question that makes you wonder what's going on or mm -hmm. was I right or wrong, definitely raise it here in the comments because that's why some of them are related and some of them are just goofy and fun, but they're it's to kind of evoke you guys provoke you guys to ask questions about it. And uh, probably I meant to say something and maybe forgot because I'm awful. Mm with that <laughs> um i'll have to check them out oh dear looks like we devolved from tea into music yes again uh and there's more flute talk i hope you guys don't mind we're just going to gloss over the flute talk it's really interesting to me too i'm a musician i've got a good gen right over there i'm kind of thinking about getting a i think chinese have a kind of flute too and i also want um not arhu but your guitar Mm. which doesn't resonate as long but really <laughs> really cool sounds i think they are really fun right um speaking of which his third josh's third and fourth infusion of his aged white mm. uh, was delicious developing that sweet aged white tea flavor good strong but hard to describe cool enjoy the rest of the tea sounds delicious um where am i gonna... oh boy did i go so far Oh, sorry, I had a little, enjoy the tea sound, perfect, right. no problem. Okay. Speaking of Asian instruments, different energy, I'm just looking. Mm. Okay, so then somebody, uh, Kale says, kill green deactivates the activity of the oxidase enzyme, yes, which naturally is in the tea leaves. Mm -hmm. When kill green is not done and the leaves are crushed, the enzymes start reacting, right, mm -hmm. right. And that's another way uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've got to, we'll get rid of that stinky green smell. <laughs> And so there's a chemical explanation is there and that's what that's you were right. talking about. That's right. what we've gone back and explained that, but it's not why the process was invented. It mm. was simply to get rid of this stinky green smell. And this is what that means, what that does. Mm. Yeah, yeah, lots of stuff about uh, oxidase enzymes. And uh, I own a very cheap synthetic instead of snakeskin arhu. Mm. But when I play it, it sounds like a dying cat. <laughs> Kiel, I want to talk about that. I have been avoiding the music topic for a while. I'm going to dive in and say this. The Gujian I just told you that I have, I was going to buy Arhu instead. We were in China our first time a long time ago, uh, and I was shopping for musical instruments. I got her. Stop laughing so oh, hard. Sorry. So the shop owner showed me the Arhu, showed me the bow, showed me how to play it, and after about five minutes, I realized so I play strings. I already play the electric bass. Let me move over. So we I, try to talk him out of it, but he doesn't. He didn't believe us. because I we don't, don't listen well, especially to family. So anyway, so he showed me how to play the R, who gave me like a five minute lesson. <laughs> and I realized watching his wrist on the, bow, on the bow hand and listening to the tone and trying it myself, I realized this is going to take me years to get good at, to get half, not good, not good, half decent because I don't play bowed strings. I don't have much experience with bowed string. So I, so I went to the Gujen, plucked string. I can pluck strings and make a decent sound and make some half decent sounds actually. So I got Arhu. And then my next one will probably you be- You got uh, Gujen. Ting. I got Gujen yeah. instead of Arhu. Yes. Um, and what does your mom have? Ting. Gu Ting. Gu Ting. Gu Ting is a gorgeous, like a, it's like a fret, a lay down fretless bass slide guitar kind mm. of thing. Yeah. Beautiful sound. And that's my next uh, next one that's in the string zone. Um, besides maybe that guitar I just mentioned a while ago. I might get that too. Anyway, cool. Uh, that was really helpful, Cindy says, to the farmers in Kilgreen to stop the vegetal smell and the result happened to be that it stopped. Yes, exactly. Mm. That's a better way to, uh, that's not yeah. a better way. It's just the way it did happen. Um, it is it, everything that the folks said about kill green above is also a hundred percent correct. Well, I didn't read it carefully, but it looked good, right? Stop the uh, all the chemical description. Kiel says personally, I'm more into synthesizers, disco, synth pop. Yes, nice music, cool. 
We got to have a session on Discord. I've got it up on purpose so that you can jump into the Discord. So we, we got to plan a, something. Yeah, we got to plan something. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. I'll throw something up in social media. I'll put it out in the future so we can do it. We'll and, share uh, with us how and you want to do it on. Kiel says, I'll stop Discord. spamming in the chat. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't Are think there, that's so here, thing. Time Signature has a question. Are there any teas that actually have that vegetal flavor? Oh, that's a great question. Mm, okay, really that's good. a such a great question. Mm. Yes, a lot of them. Green tea that wasn't done properly. Mm. Okay, I think it's not done properly. Those ones go bad very quickly. But let's pause. Let's pause because I want to. Okay. I want to put some context around. Okay. I think it wasn't done properly. So, when. Again, it's just like we said, do you, do you have to dive in at this level to really love tea? No. Do you yeah. have to love tea that is done properly? And you can love the vegetal. That's right. I just you wanted to say that vegetal. when we talk about properly, we're just talking about the, the standards, the, the really t like there's standards in Chinese tea. So there is properly and there is not, there is improperly. It doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to like it. So that's all I wanted to say. Carry on. So well, that's what she means though by what mm. it's improperly done, right? It's, right it yeah, is yeah. literally, yeah. there is good and bad in the way we're talking about tea. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It might, it might uh, inform how much you want to spend on it. I think that's worth saying. It might. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so green tea, like a um, simple example. Ba. What? Simple what? I got a Chinese slip thing. Oh, okay. Simple example. That explains why okay. I said what? <laughs> yeah, uh, like a dragon well. What's the great? What's the proper color of it? Mm. Uh, we call that brown rice color. Mm. Tell me, mm. yellowish brown. It has to be yellow. If you mm. see just pure green, really green. Bright actually, green. sometimes mm. I see people uh, describe uh, dragon well should be jade green. That's wrong. That those ones you buy, you will have the vegetal. Mm. Though it goes through kill green. Kill green doesn't mean a hundred percent. Yeah. In practice, it's an analog. Yes, there are ones right? like it's that. It's not on or off. Right? Uh, green oolong. A lot of green oolong. It's not saying mm. all green oolong are vegetal. Some of them are properly done. Yeah, extremely it shouldn't rare. Have the uh, green. Yeah, extremely mm. rare. Mm. Honestly, uh, but most of those green ones, you will have the, the vegetal uh, taste mm -hmm. in the taste, yes. and you can also, especially I think when you breathe in and out. Once you get familiar, it's not very hard. One sip, you can identify that. Mm. But those are most likely if you want to find those taste those are the ones would be more obvious in those. yeah yeah try my snow pea experiment i'm pretty excited about that yes and roasting roasted tea could also have that it's the mm. roast it's just a roast it doesn't change right. snow pea is the best snow pea is the no best. i was thinking it's about your roast easy. comment because roast is sometimes you'll still have that yeah. chingcho, right but yeah. that, that's kind of a little try to cover that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like white out for mm. for a stinky green smell yeah next year when we go back to china we're gonna uh, Maybe explain yeah. that in detail. Those are little things that is a huge topic and you need to be tasting that to know what I'm talking about. Like lots of misunderstanding about oxidation and roasting. What is roasting? Not, right, all, right. not all rock tea are high oxidation as a lot of people were saying. Mm, yeah. Anyways. Right. So let's carry on. Right. So time. that's a great question though. Time that's Signature, really thank you for yeah. that. And, um, and, uh, Kiel says, uh, Cindy, no problem. I find these pretty interesting subjects myself. Macmillan mm -hmm. says I'm too new to tea to understand, but watching our videos to learn about it. So that's a great, I, I think this will all make sense. I mm -hmm. actually, that's kind of, it's kind of why I'm here, right? Why should I be here? She knows everything. She could easily do this by herself. I'm here because I don't get a lot of this. And I think it's a great, it's a great place to be, right? You ask questions. You're, you're in the right spot, I guess. And uh, I try to ask the questions that you guys want to ask, but if I don't, jump in on the chat and let us mm. know that's what it's all about. Mm. Or sometimes I don't explain things so well. You're pretty great though. Thank you. <laughs> so, so I you, try, I'm super wordy job. trying to explain so that I have different angles and stuff yeah, and yeah. try to be clear. And Cindy wasn't mm. really upset about missing the question in tea trivia. She just wanted <laughs> to understand about Kilgreen, which is great, yeah. I know. That's great. <laughs> And um, those are the Chinese flutes, right? Sal and Dizi? Or Dizi. 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 Mm. And uh, right. Yeah. 
What about the pipa? What did he talk about pipa? Is that fruit? No. What pipa is uh, the the guitar string? Yeah, oh, right. the Chinese guitar. The yes. Chinese guitar, right? <laughs> yes. It has no sustain, right? So they have to just jiggle on the note. Um, prefer Gu Qing to Gu Zhen is much uh, and and is much older. Mm. Mm. Gu Qing. Oh yeah, Gu Qing. Wow. Yeah, I can see why it would be older. It's dead simple to make one once you figure out the string lengths and whatnot. Like a Chinese guitar mandolin shape. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. I, that's next on I'm, that and the Gu Qing. Okay, I don't know. Gu Qing is harder because it's uh, fretless, but I think so is the uh, pipa. That's what it's called, pipa. Nice. Haven't it? Okay, everybody is talking similar about the to music. The fruit. Look at all the music. It is. Oh, similar. even Cindy has Arhu. Her mom wow, got you guys all have those. It sounds like a screaming cat. Yeah, I'm yeah. so glad I didn't get one because I would just same thing. Yeah. But the beginning, you know, when you hear that, that's the that's my uh, Gu Jin. Uh, me playing the Gu Jin actually in the beginning of the video, and you'll hear it at the end. So if you missed it at the beginning, I really don't feel worry. like now we can have a really proper band. Yeah, we could have a Chinese tea band for sure. So Josh says, the reason I always let myself go off cat. topic is the more comments from Jen and Phil on each vid, the more the algorithm will promote them. Ah, even if it's indirect. Ah, yo, thank you, Josh. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Igor, you play your flute. Was it Igor? Oh, yeah, Igor. Oh, yeah. Igor is a great keyboard player. He uh, Check out our... Um, Crazy Oolong Train, that features Igor's keyboard and drum programming, which mm. is impeccable in that. Uh, we got to do something again. Oh boy, it's so long. Yeah. It's really hard to find time. Mm. Speaking of which, I think that's a good point. I just want, mm. I don't know if uh, uh, Clifford is still here. I don't see him. He might have left, it's but pretty anyway, late. Uh, if he ever watched uh, rewatch the later po uh, part of that, I just want to mention that uh, First, we're very sorry that uh, we missed uh, all the calls you mm. made on Discord, mm. uh, and uh, the because we have a really busy uh, life. This whole business is a two-man uh, thing. So we do website, we do all two person. Or, uh, two, uh, two person. Sorry, what did I say? Man. Oh. oh. That's really bad nowadays. Oh. You got to watch your pronouns, girlfriend. Oh, can I say girlfriend? Do you are you okay with girlfriend? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not making fun of pronouns. Okay, I'm not. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> so glad that happened at the end of the video. Anyways, I just want to say. Don't uh, unsubscribe because I said that. Please, I was just goofing around. Okay. You're so annoying. I'm really annoying. Anyway, I just want to say that uh, uh, it's just a two person. We do everything for our channel's website. Mm. Uh, you know the the like the sales like the packing everything mm. uh just two of us and of course we also have a personal life and he actually have a, a you have a personal life <laughs> we don't have much we personal. Have pretty good personal. but anyways just a meaning like uh, uh we cannot always on discord and we cannot mm. always pick up every phone call <laughs> and just talk yeah. about Sorry. I'm just what? sure the people on Discord already noticed that. Right, but, right. But join just, the Discord anyway. We cannot uh, just uh, pick up every yeah. phone call that uh, made yeah. to us and just uh, talk about uh, uh, those, uh, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, uh, academic or nerdy or like a tea knowledge stuff. That, But we do, we are very interested in these topics and that's why we open a, sp a space on Sunday afternoon. That's right. Uh, for hour, uh, an hour or two. That's to, right. Just to be nerdy. Let's talk about that. And I believe lots of you guys are like us. We cannot talk about these kind of things yeah, for a that's long right. time. Uh, too much in our personal life. But this is the time which yeah. Uh, everybody can be here sharing, Oh, talking. he's still there. Great. Oh, that's great. That's great. I just want to mention like, uh, uh, first, uh, sorry we missed all those calls. Yeah. But, uh, and the other thing is, is yeah. I would feel it would be, you know, who knows what might come up that would be so interesting that everybody could enjoy and appreciate and learn from. So that's I, yes, the other reason that's we really focus we it here. That, uh, mm. This is a great space. There are people from different cultures, different knowledge. They hear different things. They have different opinions on different things that we can share. So with all this kind of discussion, it would benefit not only us or you and other people can also learn from you and also join the talk. So, um, Yes, yeah, exactly. That's it. I just want to point that out. There's some great comments here too from uh, uh, from Time Signature. So first, Cindy says just reiterates that the kill green is a continuum. It's not a hundred. It's not a zero or one thing. Yeah, 
And that's true, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you know, for example, green tea, you want that fully kill green, but in other teas, you gotta stop that at the right time and do zig do whatever you need to do and then finish off later or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. anyway, no need to get into too much detail, but it's not a, mm -hmm. nothing in nature is, is a zero or one, right? That's yes. a completely uh, abstract concept. I'm so, and Fernanda says, um, She's getting there too and enjoys the learning. And Time Signature says it interesting because while that vegetal flavor might be disliked in Chinese culture, it might be considered delicious. Absolutely. That's, That's right. Like uh, in the West, we go crazy over all those raw veggies. We eat them all the time. I was, that's why I gave that snap pea example. That's a pretty mm. good way to get to the bottom of what's that flavor, but it doesn't mean it's uh, uniformly bad, mm -hmm. but it is something undesired in tea. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean if it's in the tea that you mm -hmm. might not like it yourself. You yeah. might like it a lot. Absolutely. Um, so that's why when we talk about tea, like even though we, we try to do tea in the Chinese hierarchy, because if people go to China and source Chinese tea or buy Chinese tea, that's the price. That's the that standard the, you are paying for. That's, that's why we're trying yeah. to uh, uh, share this with uh, you. But yeah. it doesn't mean that you have to agree with our standard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because of the price you are paying for. And uh, possibly if you know better, you could get what you love the most for a cheaper price. Great price, that's right. And uh, there's nothing, like I always say, you don't need to learn about tea. You, can, you don't need to know anything. You can just enjoy tea. Right. What I like is not what he likes. Mm -hmm. It's not what you like. It's all totally. Fernanda fine. has a little thing where she thinks it might be like related to evolutionary biology, like smell and taste bad, therefore not good poison. So we humans learn how to use heat on it to make it better or whatever. Mm. For she, especially like ancient times in China, it's a uh, like a mm. it's a cold. You know, like old right. times, not enough clothes, no dumb jacket, <laughs> rooms are bad. Like it's very Still cold bad. and you have salads, which in Chinese medicine is cool. And old times, that's why we don't like those kind of things. Cook it so it's warm, it's, a, it's less, less a cool. diarrhea risk. Not just, a, uh, I mean, not just a bacteria, but sometimes you, you do have people. No, provoke symptoms. Yeah, right? elderly people, there are people who ha would have to go to the washroom after ice water. Yeah. or certain salad, they might think it's a, uh, uh, like a bacteria issue. Sometimes uh, certain people could just mm -hmm. think about eyes or stuff, their tummy feels uncomfy. Mm -hmm. Jubai Jia says something really interesting. To sum up, learning is more fun than mm -hmm. remaining ignorant, but allow yourself to be a beginner. That's mm -hmm. a really great point. And I think the more you learn, the more you got to focus on the back end of that statement, which is the more you learn, you got to concentrate on still being a beginner. Sorry to go a little Buddhist on you all, but you know, it's, a, it's hard to, sometimes easy to forget that, you know, I do feel like the more mind. I learn, the more right. I r the realize more... how big the world is, mm. you know? The yeah, saying mindset. like, oh, that's actually good because I'm Chinese and a lot of times I just have it. I say, oh, Chinese do this, Chinese, the Chinese is not, you know, one thing, right? So a lot of the thing is me sharing in my background in my perspective right right so so Dominique uh, Dominique Herangi I'm not sure if I butchered your name sorry Dominique says what what do you guys think about in just a tea drinkers point of view is it worth buying tea from private suppliers compared to shops slash web shops I don't know if he uh, I'm gonna so he says like recently I asked in a Facebook group about white tea and a ton of people replied to sell my t replied to sell me tea on messenger Oh, wow. Oh. Well, we I obviously... I don't have... Uh, yeah. I don't have... I don't think the form is the fundamental difference. It's about the tea. And like, uh, personally, what I, just to tell you what I care about, right? You, you, you take it or not. It's mm, uh, up sure. to you. It's just... Uh, I don't care if it's a real store, like a, a store, a brick and mortar store, online store, or personal. I care about the tea itself and the price. I, I'm those people who care about value. Mm. If I'm paying $100 for tea, that tea better worth it. I mm -hmm. don't want to pay $100 mm -hmm. for $10 mm -hmm. tea. Uh, at the same time, I don't mind to buy a $10 tea as long as it tastes good, I like. Yeah. So uh, if you just uh, talk about those people who try to sell you your tea, I think it's uh, fine to take a look. Look at the teas. Uh, if they have pictures, look at pictures. What do they taste like? Uh, hear more, don't 
personally, I'm not very interested in stories. It's just too much tea selling. Right. It's about stories, how they were those really rugged farmer picture. That's not my thing. But uh, yeah, but maybe it's your it, thing. Yeah, it depends on how so, you want to so approach this. I'll just put a disclaimer on that too. Okay. Like all internet, like the first thing is sensible internet buying, right? So that's up to you to make sure that you're protected from you know, we're not getting into that here. We're just okay. going straight to the T. Like if points. you're just buying it on Messenger, you want to think about that. But I'm assuming you're going to think about that. So <laughs> I'm not going to give you tips on how to not get defrauded on Messenger. But just like Jen says, it's all about value. And I will point out one detail because you want to see pictures. But like I always emphasize in the little front reels or when you go on our website, what do you want to see pictures of? Because it's hard to buy tea on the internet. You can't smell it. You can't taste it. So you want to see the dry leaf, you want to see the liquor color, and you want to see the brood leaf as a minimum, I think. So again, you don't have to take my advice, but that would be my, just to add a little bit on top of what she said. And trusted buyer for me is a big thing. So if it's somebody new, how do you get a trusted buyer? You might have to have some faith, but you just, you know, monitor your investment and make sure you're not going in with both feet on the first shot, right? Mm -hmm. And do a quality yeah. assessment, etc. So hopefully that um, answered your question. We don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, we don't think it's a good thing. It's all about the tea and it's all about what you like and the value you're getting. Mm. All right. So, um, but Fernanda, yeah, if you're able to go to a physical store, that's obviously king, but mm. we're an online store. So I kind of pretend I didn't say that. No, just kidding. <laughs> I other, just uh, feel the, like it's not a person. I don't feel like it's a major showstopper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And trusted, you know, somebody, once you have people, uh, vendors you can trust, whether they're, you know, f formally have a shop or not, I think that's the key thing. McMillan says, can I print the English translation of book Chinese tea on your website? Can you print it? Yeah, you can, if you want to print Technological possible printed, I think. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to print the page, go ahead. Um, I don't mind. Uh, is that what, if that's what you're asking, it might be inefficient, but knock yourself out. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think you can resell it, but I don't know. I'm not a copyright expert. <laughs> I don't know right? the, about that. Either, Fernanda says, best way mind. to learn is trying time signature. Yes. Sorry. I didn't mean to just skip your comment. It is time signature. Says, yeah. My new quest is to find a vegetal tea. I want to try it out. Oh, that shouldn't be too hard. Mm. Um, Japanese green. Pardon me. <laughs> you are so, I'm so mean, right? Anyway. Um, no, because they kind of like that more. I think it's a thing that they look for. Clifford Little says, Fernanda, again, bad taste is astringency, actually not quite a taste. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, so more of a mouthfeel, mouth right? Feel, yeah. It is ap apophysical response where saliva reacts with the catechins to neutralize the toxic effect. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. The beginner's mind is a cornerstone of mindfulness, right? Mm, I think so. Uh, time signature. I'm I learning a lot of good things. Oh, and somebody echoed my words. Kale says, I don't know if it's uh, really vegetal you might be after, but some steamed Japanese are extremely savory and fresh green. Cindy Tiosu says, yeah, I think that's where the difference comes is we've had some that are savory and really well done and some that are neat and you get that real strong green flavor in them. So Cindy says, I have to run, but thanks. Oh, Cindy, I hope we caught you before you ran. Bye bye. And thanks for brewing with us. And everybody else said bye. And Clifford talks about bitter tastes and what those are a response to. Mm -hmm. And time signature, I've had some, I think we're getting close here. Really nice Japanese post ferment. Oh, he talked about those last week. Japanese mm. post fermented tea, really savory. I would like, love to try those. We've got a, I hope we can get out soon and have a real tea party. Right. McMillan says, have you heard of Formosa red Assam tea? Hmm. You have. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Formosa is the name. It's the old Taiwan. name of a. Is it Taiwan? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Taiwan home. The Taiwan black tea, right? Taiwan. Yeah, Assam. Oh, but they have those... Puar tree is on Taiwan too, yeah. right? Mm. We've heard of it, but we. I don't know. I don't. Do you know have Chinese? Anything about it? I don't know how they would uh, translate that. Me neither. Mm. All right, guys. That wraps it up. This yellow tea has awesome. held on really well. The whole session, it's been robust gonna and delicious. More, We're going to brew it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We will be back next week with the next installment. I'll give you a little sneak preview. Let me just slide over here and show you where we're headed. We are headed. There's the stop sign where we stopped. So we're going to get into uh, the 
the changes that take place uh, when processing tea next week. So be sure to pop on back for the next installment, episode 40, 40 of Sunday Tea Book. Uh, we are having a great time. Thank you guys for joining us for all your contributions. That is what makes Sunday Tea Book so epic. Great to go over the chat. Great to answer your questions. Great to hear your opinions. Good to have a little music talk on the side too. Stay tuned for a little tea party we'll do on uh, Discord or wherever we end, wherever ends up being the best venue. I want to do something where we can listen and drink and just chat. Mm. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you found some content in here that you found useful. Right. If you um, are coming back and looking for this video later, it might be gone. It's only for a couple days. It will be back with a link to the show notes in, in the description down below of the new video. So don't, uh, don't be alarmed if the video disappears for a little while. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so until next time that's all the spiel until next time keep, keep steeping. steeping oh and this is my gujem playing coming up now